Okay, guys, so as I was saying, today we'll be tackling data enrichment and somehow optimization. I just want us to look at um, enrichment of data. We've already done uh, data exploration. We've already gone through model modeling and I just want us to understand a little bit on data enrichment. So maybe just to ask uh, when you hear of the word uh, data enrichment, Anyone who can volunteer what comes to your mind? What do you think data enrichment means? Yes, Martin. Uh, adding features to your data. Okay. Rafa. Yeah, I would say that to make uh, data more valuable and sense that it's uh, uh, more data in the quantity and more qualitative maybe and even the quality and clean somehow yes yes rafa that uh, that's a little bit uh, more and uh, yeah we'll be covering a little bit on uh, just the quantity and the quality of data and data enrichment can anyone maybe just um uh how can i say this can anyone maybe give me data enrichment in context to speech recognition what do you think uh, it actually means in the speech recognition context, which is what we're doing um, this week? Maybe any example on how we can enrich our speech data? Yes, Geza. Is Geza's audio too low or am I the only one? Yes, can you hear me? Actually, can we can't you? hear him. Oh, okay, okay. It sounds okay. from my end like you're from far so far away. So, can you continue? I can still hear you, but you're still far. Maybe get closer to the microphone. Okay. Where about now? better just uh, okay just try to say what you're saying maybe we can uh... okay uh, data enrichment it's like uh, uh, we have seen in our uh, uh, ideas like uh, uh, data augmentation uh, which includes the process of uh, enhancing existing information just by adding uh, supplementary missing values just making some adjustments by adding some maybe noises or uh, uh, blank data uh, to make, uh, for example, uh, to manage our size of the, the data, we can uh, try to fill incomplete uh, languages with silence and the like. Uh, those process can be uh, defined as the data enrichment. Okay, thank you, Geza. Maybe just one question from something you mentioned. Uh, yeah, I do agree augmentation is part of data enrichment, but it said something about just adding blank data and the noise. Do you think this will actually help inform our our speech recognition model, the blank data and uh, noise? Uh, technically, the model uh, uh, normally works with the same length of data which uh, uh, on the right and the left uh, data should be the same. So to manage that one or to uh, manage the links of those uh, 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 audio data with the, to correlate with the text one, the model needs uh, equal links of uh, data. So for that, we try to apply some uh, techniques uh, to supplement missing values on each of the data. Okay, you're talking about a single audio. Okay, I get that now. Titus, you have something to add? Titus. Uh, yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hey, hear okay. you. Oh, okay. So um, I think uh, the adding of noise and yeah, it enriches uh, the data because we expect the model to work in a normal environment where the several factors such as dust noise. Uh, so like it's just, it will, I think it will make the model more robust with the, the additional features. So yeah. 
Okay, that is actually a nice way of thinking about it. I had actually forgotten that that part. So Henok had seen your hand raised. Do you have anything to add before I start uh, the presentation? Henok? Uh, in addition to the different techniques that we can use to add more sample store data, we can also, like it is expensive, but we can also uh, do the data collection step again and have more uh, samples for our data set. Yes, that is another good example. Thank you, Henok. Okay, so I'll just start. I'll share my screen and show you just uh, something a little bit on data enrichment. It will contain most of what you guys have said and maybe <coughs> something else additional, a little bit um, uh, depth. So I hope you can see my screen. I'll just go ahead. <coughs> okay, so as I've said, we'll tackle data enrichment and uh, maybe touch a little bit on uh, some optimization data and uh, what we're going to do is just uh, do a small introduction give a little background then go into detail about uh, enrichment optimization and a few things that um, is done there maybe we'll uh, focus more on one of the methods for data enrichment because of our speech cognition data but i'll just touch a little bit on the others and then we can also look at a uh, a few other data sets that we can use to enrich our data, especially for this week, I did find some data sets. Okay, so the reason as to why we're actually doing data enrichment in the first place is, um, like uh, we've said, speech recognition. Uh, if we say we're using deep learning, like I know this week we'll be using a lot of deep learning to actually build our models the neural networks have actually improved how these models work and so for this kind of um, this kind of model to work we need a very high quality data however for example like this week uh, what the languages we are trying to actually model is not english it's uh, i know this week we are doing um hurricane swahili and uh, these languages are not popular. We don't have as much data. And uh, maybe if it is recorded, maybe they've been recorded under certain circumstances and uh, maybe the quality is not the best. You might find maybe predictions are not as exact as maybe the way English are, and maybe English kind of recognitions are. You already know there are models like Alexa, Siri, and uh, I think Google Assistant, which use English. And uh, I think more, all of us, we can say we, we've interacted with one of these uh, kind of models, and they actually do some good work in English. But I don't think I've uh, seen one in uh, African language, and uh, that's where the challenge uh, arises so for example of the challenges we can see in data we can see maybe like the background noise like i think tata said because uh like this week we've said we're trying to actually someone buys i think they said something about food stuff groceries and then they record they just record in their own language and then our model should actually translate that and put it in a database so if let's assume they're doing this on the market definitely there will be background noise maybe noise from a third party just uh so many things going on in the market so background noise is one of the main major issues that um, we'll actually encounter in our kind of models the other thing is uh, reverberations this is just a cause and depending on maybe the kind of font someone is using the kind of room they are in we, we can't avoid the aspect of echoes in our data. So these two, they're actually very common in natural communication and um, we can't avoid them because we want we actually want our data to be able to do well in a natural kind of communication. What we try to do in the planning and just modeling in general is actually make machines understand the human speech without
Okay, so can you guys still hear me? I think I lost my connection for a little bit. I hope you can still hear me. Now we can hear you. Oh, you couldn't hear me. Where did you? Where did you? Uh, where did you guys lose connection? I've just done the introduction. I hope you. Yeah, yeah. We heard it just about uh, one minute. It just we oh, okay. we lost you. Okay. Okay, so because of these issues I've just mentioned, like uh, background noise and uh, the echoes, that's why we actually need to do data enrichment and optimization. This is where this topic actually comes in. How can we actually make our model perform better despite these kind of uh, limitations? So just uh, I'll go a little into the background of uh, let me just say data of speech data and uh, how it is collected, how we just go through a few um, modeling. So speech data, how we get speech data is uh, mainly from databases. And uh, we can have these databases having uh, maybe three kind of data. We can have the ones that are uh, human versus synthesized. We can have others that are objective versus subjective. And then we have the short term, the mid -term, medium term and the long term. So the human, in the human kind of databases, you actually find there are different types. We can have like the acted, the induced, and the spontaneous. So the difference is, like for example, I don't know if you guys have heard of Common Voice. Common Voice is just a platform, I think, by Mozilla. You can just log in and then they give you a text and you just uh, maybe read that text in your own language. Maybe if it's in English, they can record it maybe with your own accent and uh, it actually just helps to enrich this kind of data. So acted, acted, this could actually be specific where maybe this statement actually wants you to actually act it in terms of uh, maybe show anger, maybe in emotions, maybe a certain kind of pitch. So when you're actually acting, maybe what you're doing is actually, um, it's being it's being controlled in a way. So that the, that's a data that is actually being controlled, the way you, sp you speak it out, it's being controlled. Then the induced kind of data, you might find that the induced kind of data, maybe you are recording the same speech and you are intoxicated by alcohol. So you're not in your normal self, but uh, the fact that you're actually still doing the recording. Uh, yeah, so that is just an example of um, induced kind of <laughs> induced kind of um, data and uh, all this data will actually find them everywhere because even if you're saying we're going to the people for for markets and how they're going to record what they've just purchased we can't just assume that uh, they'll be in their best at all times maybe they'll be sleepy and that is also another example of induced induced kind of data and just so many other things then the spontaneous this is actually the one that you can say is maybe real this just depends on who you are just talking maybe it's just a statement if you have not been told how to do it like for example the way i'm talking now i'm just spontaneous i'm just being me i'm just being me and my voice and my accent and then the synthesized kind of data compared to human if you just see human versus synthesized human is data from um from us the living things but synthesized if you've heard of um, there are these kind of systems these days that you just put words and then it gives you the speech version of it it also has, has a number of voices recorded in its system but uh, you just put in words and then it gives you the speech version of your words so if you do that to such a system you, you will also get data as well, but uh, you will, that's an example of synthesize, something that has actually been coded AI or machine. So the, the other form of data we can have in our databases is objective versus subjective. And objectives are things we cannot change uh, about the person. You can have maybe just maybe like the gender, like I am talking, you can just hear a voice and like, oh, that's female voice. Maybe from the age, we can't really tell, but uh, maybe when you are trying, maybe you are a common voice and you are told to actually give your demographics and to give your age and height. I know that maybe someone who's sounding like a baby, the voice is actually very different than someone who's maybe 30, just because of age. I'm not sure how height affects. Uh, the, do we think height actually affects the way someone talks? 
I'm not really sure, but I just give this as examples on uh, the kind of what objectivity means in terms of data. Well, subjective, on the other hand, is um, how can I say this? Uh, something like uh, emotions, things we can no, no, we cannot control. Subject. No, no, no. Actu yeah, actually, that subjective is. I remember in week zero, you guys were doing um, subjectivity when we were doing. Is was it? Uh, it was sentiment, sentiment analysis, and we are trying to get the subjectivity out of a tweet. Maybe does this look like maybe a fact, or was it based on just uh, emotions, just personal public opinions? So that is an example of a subjective data. The way. I can actually be reading something about politics in that field does not it's not my favorite so maybe I'll read it with a, the way I'll deliver it is not the same way as someone who is actually into politics and they are giving that statement like yeah this has meaning to them so this is the subjective data another kind of uh, separation we can have in the data is the short term, the medium term, and the long term. So when I see short term, these are the things that actually influence your speech. Like for example, emotions are short term. You might be happy at the time you're actually recording a speech. You might be sad. You might be angry. Those are just the short the end. Then the mid term are the induced ones, the induced kind of um, things that have happened to you like yeah sleepiness and the intoxication this year they form part of your speech they are still human but um the fact that maybe you did not sleep well yesterday but maybe by tomorrow you'll be okay and your voice will be back to normal so these are the kind of medium term um, a medium term um things that affect the data and then we have the long term now the things that we can't actually change they're just who you are like the biological traits the cultural background and the personal characteristics so this could uh, be maybe for example the accent if you have been raised speaking Amharic your entire childhood and then suddenly you have to speak English or just another language there's that accent that you cannot just change because it's coming from your background so these are the other things that um these are the type of data that the the different kind of um, data that can actually be we can't say really data but what influences the da the speech that has stored in databases i hope that is clear is there a question there before i go on to the next uh, kind of background i want to do any question i can't see so just me I've lost my colleague oh, okay I'm back again my, my network keeps going off I don't know if it's because I keep shifting but anytime I come back to the recording my it may keep telling me I've lost my connection but I'm back again so I'll just continue I assumed we were on the same page so the next thing I want us to cover on the background of data is acoustic uh, feature extraction so I know this is, was part of your task one and uh, I won't be going a bit deep into it, just uh, what it is, what kind of features that uh, this kind of uh, acoustic extraction does. And I remember yesterday if you were in Musa's class, uh, Musa just mentioned that when we are dealing with acoustic uh, kind of extraction and modeling, we are just doing in terms of the phonemes and the graphene. So, when we are doing acoustic feature extraction, this is the kind of model we follow. We just follow like a low-level low descriptors, and then we have uh, on the next page here, it's a continuation. We have like the functional features also drawn from an acoustic uh, kind of uh, model. So when we are doing acoustic uh, feature extraction, the low-level descriptors we have them grouped into three main um, parts we have the prosodic features we have the spectral features and uh, the voice quality features so under prosodic as you can see is where we just have the pitch the pitch of that voice maybe the energy being given i think um 
you as humans we can tell the kind of pitch the kind of emotion the kind of energy being given so we also our machines also use this kind of uh, modeling acoustic modeling to actually understand the pitch and the energy that was actually being used when delivering that message and uh, we also have spectral features here we have an uh, example like the the transformations we have the spectrums we have our linear predictions and uh, we have substral coefficients so if you actually uh, i don't know if you've done this in uh, caustic modeling already but if you need a little bit more information on these kind of features that need to be extracted from a caustic extraction i've actually attached a really nice uh, research paper on this documentation that can give you a little bit more detail on uh, everything that i'm going to cover today so and finally the other features extracted from acoustic uh, extraction is uh, the voice quality features where we just have the perturbations and the harmonicity how oh, this is all just about it's like a metadata to to the voice to not to the speech that's actually being delivered apart from actually what's being said something else that you can actually derive from that data so in acoustic feature extractions this is just uh, based mainly on the raw data and uh, in addition to this raw data after actually getting this raw low level descriptors next we can just go and get the added feature sets like uh, we have these deltas these deltas and then we can go ahead and do filtering maybe just some smoothening the the audios the speech i keep saying speech we can you can think when i say speech or audio it's just the same thing and then uh, you can go ahead and do filtering uh smoothening and uh, normalization of that speech so this is just on the low level of uh, acoustic extractions next we go to the functional which is just mainly statistical statistical so in functional we have things like the range made the range of uh, maybe that we can say like uh, like the range of that audio maybe the mean uh, the moments the percentiles it's just it's just statistical terms and this is what we actually get when we are doing some form of acoustic modeling so as to understand data Okay, not that uh, I say data again. In this case, when I say data, I actually mean the audio, the speech data. That's the contest for for a week. Then the next thing that uh, uh, we actually do in um, this kind of speech recognition is do some form of modeling. I've just used classification here, but uh, we can also have regressors. But uh, this is just a form of modeling. When I say classification, this is just a form of modeling. And we have like the SVMs used for modeling. So we have the decision trees in random forests, classifiers and regressors. So I think actually random forests, uh, they, I've, I've put them together, decision trees and random forests, because in, uh, in a speech recognition kind of uh, format, random forests actually help, uh, I think, with decision trees, we might have we, we might have a little bit of overfitting, and a random forest comes in to actually help with this specific issue from decision tree. And then uh, I've also added a deep a deep learning model under classification here, LSTMs. You did this last week. Uh, this this was supposed. This means is it long, short? I don't even remember the. <laughs> Yeah, we have Sorry, LSTMs. Memory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the LSTMs. And then finally, finally, just on the background, while doing all this, we've done, we have the data, we've done some form of uh, ADA or understanding, just uh, understanding more acoustic feature extractions. We've done a little bit of modeling classification. The other thing we need to do is evaluation metrics, just to evaluate the performance of our model is something we've also done and a few of the metrics we can use to evaluate our models is uh, like the recall we also have the unweighted uh, average recall UAR and the weighted average recall we also have the word error rate I know this specific you are given a function on the word error rate and this might actually after doing some data enrichment this specific metric might actually help you understand if there's been any form of change in your model 
after maybe adding data, doing this, doing that, we'll go into methods of uh, data enrichment. And then finally here we also have Uh, we can't hear you, it's Anastasia. Hey guys, can you hear me from this end? Yes. Okay, so I think my laptop has lost uh, connection. Maybe I'll just join in a few. Oh, this one, this one is here. I'll just rejoin. Oh, my internet is actually lost. Okay, so my laptop has actually lost its internet connection completely. I don't know what's going on. I'm on the same Wi-Fi the phone is, so I think I'll just use Desmond's. Um, I'll just use Desmond's presentation and continue with uh, what I was saying until my internet is back. We don't have to stop the class. So let me catch up. Okay, so we had just finished on background. I had actually just, I was, I was asking if there is any question on the background so far before I lost my connection. Then I realized I was talking to myself. So are there any questions so far on what I've tackled before we go now into data enrichment? Okay, so I will continue to data enrichment and a little bit on optimization. Um, as well. Okay, so as uh, we were introduced by the others, by the other trainees in the class, uh, Martin, Rafa, and the rest, data enrichment is actually a process of integrating uh, data available in the real world. So this is um, 
this is a form of just extending the data that you have so that you increase quantity, you increase quality. We'll just go a little bit more on how to do it. But uh, what we just do in the enrichment is we just integrate the data that we already have uh, in the real world. And the main reason as to why we actually do data enrichment is to increase the size, the diversity of the speech, and uh, maybe using uh, labeled data that is already there and maybe exploiting a little bit of um, unlabeled data. So by increasing size, like uh, for example, I know we already gave you a lot of data, but all that data was assuming you would actually find maybe it was collected in the same setting and it could uh, maybe Maybe it was a control setting, maybe, maybe it was something acted, maybe it was just spontaneous, maybe it was induced. It could be maybe just uh, of the of the examples they explained on how the data can actually be collected. You might actually find that the entire training set you have, especially if it is from one site, from one location, it could actually be in just one form of that data. So when we say increase the size and the diversity of that speech, we can actually integrate data from different data sets. Like for example, the data we, you already had for that we already gave you, and then maybe another data that has maybe the maybe the same format, but not collected in the exact same kind of uh, environment. So that is just an example of um, increasing the size and diversity of speech. And then something else that when we do enrichment, we actually get to utilize the labeled data and exploit a little bit on unlabeled data. So when we mean by labeled data, this is data that uh, the features have, have actually been installed. Like for example, if you notice the data we give you, you we can actually tell the difference between the file name. This is actually the audio itself. And then maybe we have um, we have uh, the transcription itself. So in other, in other kind of speech data, there might actually be additional metadata. I know that uh, Librosa actually helped you guys get this metadata, but you can maybe find data that already has this. It has already been labeled. In a situation maybe where I can say like they acted, they acted kind of data, maybe they need you to actually act in a certain kind of emotion. And maybe these emotions will also be added to the data set. And so you might actually find that one also labeled. But then when you say exploiting and labeled data, and labeled data is um, data that is, let me just say everywhere, anywhere that is not collected or uh, on a data set is unlabeled data. Like for example, this, uh, I was actually checking on, um, you can, with your own language, yeah, YouTube actually gives you an API. If maybe there's like a program on YouTube that is in your own language and they actually give uh, the subtitles, in your own language, you can actually mine that data because it is YouTube, so there is audio version of it. And since it also has subtitles, then that becomes your transcription. So this kind of data is unlabeled data. It's just available, but if you want to actually get this kind of data, you can just uh, use the API from YouTube and get this kind of data. Okay, so some form of uh, mainly what happens in data enrichment, just a few approaches that can be used in, in data enrichment. We have data pooling and um, SSL and uh, AAL. So I'll go deeper into this two a little bit later. Not too deep, but maybe just classifying them on what is data pooling and what exactly is SSL and AL, but these are the examples of uh, the approaches we can actually use in data enrichment. So what data pooling is in general, it's just merging data that is already there from multiple labels, but in consistent databases. So <clears throat> like I have said, yes, already you have one, we already have one data we collected from GitHub. And uh, this is data that is already in a certain specific format, a certain consistent format on its own. After, at, towards the end of this tutorial to show you data, another data collected from a different kind of database. It also has the same format as the data we are using this week, but it's collected in a different kind of um, uh, like location. So you maybe you'd have to clean them differently. They're not exactly the same but you can actually merge these two data to have a big, to have one big data set that is, um, yeah, now that is enriched. 
same format, same uh, maybe same language because we are maybe you are trying to do Amharic or Swahili, uh, but uh, now it's actually enlarged and actually more diverse. Then uh, SSL and uh, AL. So these ones, they semi, semi or automatically develop data that is missing. Um, that is missing the label. So this uh, will will actually find this in um, form of feature feature optimizations. These two, I think, will um, they are examples of feature. They are parts of feature of optimization. Mm, no, no, we're doing data enrichment. Oh, okay, I think this is maybe like the example because it's semi or automatically developed data that are missing uh, labels. So this is uh, maybe we could actually say examples like the Librosa that helped us get metadata on like the duration of that, the duration of that audio, maybe the sample rate for that audio, another kind of data. So on the other hand, optimization, let me, yeah, on the other hand, data optimization, data optimization is the process of actually improving the data quality. So if you notice about maybe something like data enrichment, we're just adding data, we're adding the diversity, we're doing a lot of just adding data and uh, you, can, you can just add a lot of data and maybe not all of it is helpful. Most of it could just be garbage. And uh, what optimization comes in to do is actually now to improve the quality of that data set before you go ahead and do modeling. So what when we say data quality in this context, we mean, um, uh, data that is actually most representative, it, it is most representative uh, with the smallest data set. So like for example, we've said the data you already have now, maybe it's about 1500 audios collected in a certain specific way. Then for example, I also have a data set in the same format, but maybe just another 1500 collected in a different way. And then maybe we get like these small samples, maybe five of them. So this is a lot of data. What we want to do in uh, data optimization to improve the quality is actually get something smaller, a small data set, but has actually represented all these kind of settings that were actually used to record uh, this data. Something else we can actually consider in quality is the appropriate feature size and format suitable for system structure. So you might actually find maybe the models that you're trying to to develop, then you're, you're, they need your data. In. Yes, is someone? Is someone who's unmuted? Is someone? Is someone? Are they, are they muted now? Okay, I'll assume they're muted now because they can't hear them anymore. Okay, so another form of, uh, yes, I was, I was saying on the data quality is actually getting uh, your data in a, in a feature size and format that is suitable for modeling. And then finally, we have uh, maybe data quality can be interpreted as well as um, data with the least acoustic characteristic mismatch between the training set and the testing set. So what we said is um, we want our models to actually perform in a, in a natural kind of environment. So when we're actually modeling our data, we want it to actually have the characteristics that are somehow similar to the ones that we're actually going to be deploying our model to. So yeah, like Taters was saying, we might actually need to have some noise, maybe some background noise in our data so that maybe we can tell our models, our neural networks to actually learn, maybe be able to actually distinguish the noise from whatever is actually being said because our, I know our testing set uh, looks the same, might, ha might have the same kind of characteristics. So in this kind of experimentation, in this kind of experimentation, um, experimentation environment, uh, we, 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 we have one data set, training and testing. So testing actually it's used to um, 
to represent like the environment and then the training is what we use to train our model. So if you're actually doing EDA, your training set and your testing set should uh, be cleaned or maybe merged, enriched, optimized in the same way so that we have the characteristics matching in both, in both sets. Okay, so in optimization, some of the few things we'll be looking at is example is examples are like data balancing and uh, data selection. So data balancing is just like adjusting the weights belonging to the minority class, and uh, data selection is just choosing the smallest, most representative data set. So data balancing, if you've done maybe modeling, um, modeling before, and sometimes you might find that uh, maybe you're just doing a normal kind of prediction and your data is, uh, maybe you're doing the kind of yes, no, let's say a B testing, because you've already done a B testing and you might find that maybe your control group and your exposed group, you've been given data and maybe the exposed group, you have data that's just maybe 20% of the entire data set and control group is 80% of the entire data set. So this kind of imbalance in your data can actually misinform. It can actually misinform your model. And we that's why we'll do some form of, uh, that's why we do some form of balancing in modeling, uh, in machine learning models as well as in deep learning models so that we can better improve the quality of our data sets. And data selection is what I've just said about just using the most representative, but uh, the smallest data set. Okay, next. Ah, okay. So the other thing additional to data optimization, apart from maybe the data balancing and uh, data selection, the other things we'll also be considering is a feature feature optimization and uh, in feature optimization we have two methods we have a uh, feature compression and we have uh, feature enhancement so what feature compression uh, is uh, does it is it obtains the attributes with the reduced dimensionality like uh, it, it follows the same principle as the pca when we were doing dimensionality reduction for our data. Maybe we don't need all the features to to actually train our models. Maybe they are just taking up computing power and computing space. So that's what feature compression does. If you don't need it, if you actually find that maybe during training you don't need that feature to inform your model, you can just compress those features to, to a reduced dimension. And then the other thing we have in feature optimization is uh, feature enhancement. And uh, what feature enhancement does, it, uh, it boosts the robustness of your data by wiping off additive or convoluted noise based on feature processing. So additive noise, we've said this, uh, we have this kind of just noise that is part of natural communication, but uh, what, feature, what feature enhancement does, like for example, the convoluted noise is uh, like, maybe I may be talking and uh, I'm assuming maybe you're also hearing somebody else in the background, but I'm the main speaker. So what feature enhancement does is actually, the ones that on the background, it maybe it gets, demystified can i say that <laughs> and then uh the one that we actually need to use the feature is that it actually gets enhanced then we can just concentrate on that okay so the reason as to why i did combine uh, data enrichment and optimization is because the two of these concepts they're not mutually exclusive if we do data enrichment, like we've said, maybe we've increased our data sets to 1 million, maybe not everything will inform our data and we will need optimization to actually make sure that this 1 million of data is a uh, quality data, quality kind of data. And um, an example of this is uh, maybe, you know, the process of aggregation, it is usually, uh, it usually accompanies data, data selection. Okay, so that is just the basics of feature, no, 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 of data, I'm actually lost, of data enrichment and uh, optimization. Maybe I'll just mention a little bit on the other three things that we can actually mainly consider 
in um, data enrichment and optimization. That's what we'll be doing next. And that is uh, the labeled data, exploiting the labeled data, the unlabeled data and our feature optimization. So most of actually the techniques used in, in the labeled data, the unlabeled data and the feature optimization I have already mentioned. Uh, but I just want to explain uh, why do we have maybe these kind of issues and why exactly are we doing this kind of uh, approaches? So, labeled data. This one, I think you can just go to the next, yeah. Okay, so when we are doing uh, data enrichment, and what I think, uh, if we actually, because this is a two-week, this is a two-week sprint project, and if your your group actually finishes early, you can actually go ahead and uh, exploit more labeled data to main inform your, to mainly inform your data set. And uh, what, like I said, label data is just data from data sets. Whatever I had explained about speech data and how they are collected, all that is just labeled, um, labeled data. And so one of the issues that we have uh, in labeled data is the aspects of naturalness of the uttered speech, maybe the acoustic backgrounds and uh, the languages. So we won't have to worry about languages in, um, in this week because uh, what we are trying to focus on is one specific language and uh, maybe you're just doing Amharic or Swahili. If uh, I know maybe for example, if you're doing it in, um, if you're trying to model specifically for a country like Kenya, you might actually want to mix English and Kiswahili because most of the time, everyone just uses English and Swahili in one statement. So maybe when you're doing it, for example, in a, for a country like Kenya and they just mix all the languages, you might actually want to have different languages in your model. Uh, in your model. So for this week, you'd, I don't think you would have to worry a lot about uh, languages. So some of the methods that we can use to exploit label data and uh, enrich our data set is data pooling. I had already explained uh, data pooling, just uh, integrating multiple data sets. That is what data pooling is, to just increase the size, the size of our data. And then another method we have uh, is um, ensemble learning. It's in the next page, you have ensemble learning, data balancing, and data selection. So also notice I've, also, I've said something about data balancing and uh, data, data selection, where data balancing is just balancing uh, the, classes, the class distribution of your data, and data selection is selecting the best representative features. So one of the methods I've not, uh, at this point, you can just go to the next page. Because one of the methods I've mentioned everything here, this is just a little bit detailed on what I had already mentioned. One of the me methods I had not mentioned earlier is uh, ensemble learning. And ensemble learning is actually a machine learning approach. And you can find that while uh, most machine learning approaches, they just use one classifier in their training, the ensemble method, they construct a set of classifiers, like we have these base learners. So your new data is uh, taken as a weighted or unweighted, um, it's actually weighted against that, that base learner. So you might find maybe it's... Um, like a form of, how can I say this? I don't know if there's anyone here who has actually used any form any form of this before, bugging, boosting, and stacking. I know I've used boosting. If uh, maybe, for example, you've done some modeling before and used something like Adaboost. Adaboost is an example of a boosting technique and it follows um, under this. I don't think I have a good explanation on this. I can't find one. So I need someone who has actually used one of these approaches, either bugging, boosting, or stacking. And I've given an example of boosting. We have like the other boost library that is mainly used for boosting. So if you can just get someone from the group to actually explain to others what happens. Yeah. Okay. There's no one. This one, this one, uh, can you handle that quickly? Because let me just do a quick search. I think I have, um, I 
have lost track of, track of what boosting does in data boosting. This one. Okay, I think I've also used Ada Boost, but that was a long time ago. I can't get the exact explanation right now. Oh, I just forgot. I have lost my internet and I'm doing research with my laptop again. Um, 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 um. Okay, so those are the kind of methods used in, SM, in ensemble learning. The paper I shared. I think it has a lot more on that. And uh, I think with a little more research, you can also get to understand this, these techniques. Okay, so I'll just continue because I also see time is not on our side and I wanted us to look at a few data, data sets. So the other, apart from labeled data, we can also exploit unlabeled data and uh, Again, I had already said what unlabeled data is. <clears throat> okay, something, one thing I need to mention is uh, one of the main issues with uh, labeled data is uh, labeling uncertainty. And when you use those methods like the polling, balancing, and the selection, we actually try to deal with this uh, label uncertainty kind of issue. But then when we have the and labeled kind of data we are using we are trying to fix the prediction uncertainty because uh, we've already said unlabeled data that does not have labels so when we have an unlabeled kind of data the main issue we are trying to solve um, is the prediction uncertainty just when we say prediction uncertainty it's just the confidence value for our model okay so you can just go to the next page the response I think like two pages. I've already explained the unlabeled data. And uh, one of the methods you can use to exploit unlabeled data, we have uh, like, um, we have the machine oracles, we have human oracle, and we have a combination of the two. So in like in machine oracle, it's uh, like what I was explaining for YouTube, and uh, you can just use the AIs, they provide today to actually get more data. And then the human is, um, what I think, I think Henok is the one who said you can just go ahead and do more data collection. I mean, just go and do more data collection and then inform your data. And then, so in uh, another method you can actually use the, for unlabeled data is just combine the two, use some machine and some human intervention. Okay, so finally, uh this month you can go i think i've covered uh, like two 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 slides this month you can just scroll again okay so that's what i was explaining about the methods that i used and then finally we have the like i had mentioned before the feature compression the feature co uh, what was it it was feature compression we have feature enhancement yeah feature compression feature enhancement and then we have another added method called the feature deliberation so what feature deliberation does it actually tackles the echo problem the echo problem that we and that we said some of our data no that speech data has okay so because of time that uh, will be all on the enrichment and optimization after this slide, I've actually just added a couple of data sets. I've also, I've also shared this uh, presentation with you guys. You can go to the next page, this one. This one. And uh, from there all the way to down, I've added, I think, like four data sets. So this, I did Swahili. I'm um, actually, apologies for Amharic. I, I, couldn't understand a lot. Maybe you can just follow the same kind of format I did to actually get more data.
in the documentation there's a link uh, added for more data you can explore those ones as well but these ones are different what i was actually aiming when looking for an extra kind of data set is um data set that is in the same format as the data we already have so that when we are doing data pooling it can actually be easier because if we are actually going to inform our label data too much it might actually take take up a lot from the modeling. So when I went to actually look for extra data sets, I was looking for a data that is in almost the same format as the one we already have. So for example here, the first data set that I have added, it's a Swahili data set and this was collected from just like um, reading of story excerpts from newspapers, from novels, and then someone was just, they were just read audio and then transcribe and it uh, becomes um, data so this this data is actually a little bit more extensive and it uh, has uh, accents you can actually hear different accents from this kind of data i've explored this data myself and i know i've seen it's different then the next data set is uh, also from the same kind of database so it's actually recorded in the same format as what we have this week another Swahili data set, but this one now is basically Bible, Bible chapters, Bible chapters just read in Swahili. So as you can see guys, the data we already have was a different kind of data. I've also added, added a data on uh, maybe the newspapers, novels, and maybe data on Bible. So definitely if you're going to do some kind of data enrichment, you'd notice that maybe the same I know most people don't read the Bible in the same tone that they read their novels. So with this kind of with this kind of uh, diversity, you can actually have your data set being more informed. So you are training model. When you're training your model, it can actually be more informed on what is happening in the real world. So for Amharic um, speakers, you can also do this and uh, find more data sets from um, for your language i really don't know what which site i can use so i only found uh for swahili there's a university in kenya dikat for those who are from kenya and they're really doing a lot of um, speech kind of data collection and they had a lot of data on that you can also find if there's an institution in your area it also does some kind of collection of data and then you can just collect different kinds of data just pull them together make sure you do some form of um, data sampling, data selection, so the data is just representative but in a nice and small manner, then you can actually now use this different kind of data sets to train your model. So that's, that's it from this class. Just wanted to mention something final. Uh, there's another data set I've added. This is, this is an English data set you don't have to exploit i just wanted to mention on uh, this has been collected from uh, what i has as i had said the common voice platform and what they are doing is just like it's let me see it's good for the community what they're doing is just getting getting the speech data because now unlike the other data says maybe when you say you want to do some form of forecasting or prediction you can actually get that data easily. But when you're doing some speech recognition, you actually have to go really deeply and maybe I want to do some speech recognition, not speech classification, which is uh, different. Maybe you just want to do recognition and uh, you need the audio and the transcription and this data might actually be tough to get. So you guys can actually visit the Common Voice platform. And if you have time, it will just feel like hanging out and you can just help out in that platform and... Uh, just what you what is needed is your voice and your accent and just be you and just do a little bit of uh of recording to help the community okay so at the end of that document i've also had uh, the main reference paper that has has been used to inform this class if you need to do a little bit more understanding on the math especially the math and the statistics behind this these methods you can actually consult that paper if you also want maybe to do some form of some form of maybe evaluation metrics and uh, maybe do the where they also have a nice explanation on um, how exactly they don't have the codes um, so it's, it's not a technical paper 
it's mainly a statistical paper, but it will actually help you understand what you're doing. So I've been talking a lot. I'll just leave the platform maybe for any question. As of now, I see the time is already passed. If there are any questions, we can take them now. Are you guys still there? Am I talking alone? We're here. Ah, okay. So I also noticed that I forgot to mention about, I have added a link on a, a like Kenya Rwanda kind of data set. So, Faith, I think the Rwandans here are, is it Faith and Kevin? Is that right? So you can also actually explore that page. I didn't understand anything. Everything was in Kenya, Rwanda. So I didn't even get to download the data set because I didn't understand what was going on. But I think uh, that's also a nice platform. You can actually get more speech kind of, um, kind of data. So are there no questions? I'll just leave it for another one or two, one minute. And then if there are no questions, we can actually just end the class. Thank you, Rafa. We can just actually end the class in another one minute if there are no questions. Okay, now one minute seems too long. So I think we'll... Uh, end the class there. Thank you for listening in. Today I talked a lot. <laughs> so just thank you for listening in. Let me see if I can stop the recording. So Tadesa, you're asking about implementation and uh, mainly what you can do like i said is exploit the labeled data just getting uh, different data sets and then pull them together that's why i actually advised on getting data that has the same kind of format as the one we already have the two that i've shared for swahili the novel stories and the bibles they're the exact not the exact, but they're in kind of the same format. The audios are in the same format as the, as the data for this week, but the text files are not in the exact same format. You'd have to do some form of cleaning to actually get that transcription. So just pull this data together. And then for data, like I've said, uh, when you are doing some quality, quality kind of, you can do some maybe... Is it, is it data selection? You can, data selection can actually be done maybe as a sample. I, it's kind, I think I forgot to mention, but you can actually do when you're doing data, data selection, you can do some form of like a Euclidean distance kind of um, implementation. I think you did this again last week. You can do some form of Euclidean distance and just get data from a certain specific point, you just get data and maybe just sample a few. Just make sure it's actually representative of maybe the different data sets you've actually pulled together. So after just having these data sets together, you can go ahead and do what you've been doing this week. Just explore, again, inform your model, train it, do some feature in a, some uh, parameter tuning, and then you can again test the accuracy of your model. Do you think it actually improves when you have um, diverse kind of data or when you only had the weekly data? So that's the best way to actually implement enrichment. Does that answer your question? Oh, okay. So any other question before I end the, I stop the recording?
Okay, and thanks guys for attending. Just uh, have a nice evening. Nice coding. <laughs>